In this screencast, I will demonstrate how to pattern along a path to make retro style curves in Inkscape 0.46. I vaguely remember a viewer asking how these stripes or curves were made many months ago. I'm not exactly sure what I told him then. I kind of had an interest in making something like this recently, so I thought I would turn it into a tutorial topic. I did find that patterning things along a path can be a little intense for Inkscape depending on what one is doing and how many curves uh, one is making. I realized that I should stick to the basics in this screencast by keeping my project simple and then letting the viewer make something more complex after they have learned the fundamentals. So let's begin the tutorial. <clears throat> okay, retro style curves. The first thing I want to do is set up my document and uh, I'm going to go to file document properties and I've got my page set for 800 by 600 we're just going to do a small graphic and I also have my border on top of drawing that'll come in handy in the end so I just want to make sure that I have it set now alright now what I'm going to do is set up some guides and in Inkscape 047 we have a handy little feature that puts guides around your uh, canvas border automatically uh, but we're going to go ahead and budget here. I'll use the same method I've always used in the past. I'll make this 800 by 600 and I'm gonna go to my align and distribute and I'm gonna center that up on my page and I'm gonna go to object object to guides okay that puts guides around my border. Now what I'm gonna do is uh, slide a guide down in the middle so I have some crosshairs. I'm gonna make this 400 wide and this one should be 300. Okay, that'll just help me get started. Alright, now what I wanna do is uh, I wanna draw like an L-shaped path and I wanna put a fillet or a radius on there. Uh, so what I wanna do, um, first thing I'm gonna do I guess, let, let me just bring in my palette my color palette. I've gone ahead and made this ahead of time. You can use whatever colors you want. Um, I kinda made these colors myself based on uh, some artwork that I made before. These are kinda retro-ish colors. Uh, so I'll just move these over here. And I'm gonna go ahead and ungroup this for now. And basically, if I were to select on one of these squares, I have it drawn in at 50 by 50 pixels. Um, and I'm going to use uh, five of these uh, 50 by 50 uh, squares to pattern. Okay, now there is a trick to, uh, to get your uh, curve just the way you want it. And uh, let me carry on, and I'll show you uh, my, little, uh, my little equation or trick here. Okay, so I need to get a fillet in here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hold my control key down and draw a circle. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, give this thing a stroke. I'll make this one, and I'll go ahead and turn off the, uh, the fill. Okay, and I'm going to select this. I'm going to turn on my lock, and I'm going to make this 250 pixels in diameter. Okay, the reason that I'm making it 250 pixels is because each one of these adds up to 250. Okay, so I want my circle diameter to equal the size um, of my little squares here. Okay, so now that I got this, I'm going to go ahead and just shove this over and it'll snap to my, uh, my grids here. And in order to get a fillet, what I'm going to do is double click on this and first let me check my document properties. Whoops, not my document properties, my preferences. I'll get this thing a little smaller here. And I want to check out my uh, steps. Okay, I'm 10 degrees. That's fine. Okay, now what I'm going to do is double click on this and I'm going to left click and hold this down and just drill it back and I'm gonna hold my control key down so it snaps right here. I'm gonna do the same down here and I'm gonna push up just a little bit to get these lines to disappear and I have a nice fillet. Okay, so now what I can do is highlight this, go to object, or actually go to path, object to path, 
go to our node tool, then we go to our Bezier tool. I'm going to select on that end snap, hit enter. I'll select on this end snap and snap that there. Okay. Now I'm going to turn off my guides and you see that I have a nice filleted path with, uh, with proper tangents here. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do next, this is going to become my, uh, actually the object that I'm going to pattern. So I'm going to go ahead and take this uh, palette here. I'm going to select it all and I'm going to group it. And I'm going to make that just two pixels wide. Okay, and it's hard to see, but I'll show you what I'm going to do in the end here. Now, it's important that this be on top of this in the Z order, okay? And I'll show you why. Let me select this. I'll select this. We'll go to Effects, Generate from Path, Pattern Along Path here. And I'm going to go Repeated Stretched. Okay, now I'm going to take all the default settings. And again, this should... Uh, give me the wrong type of, uh, of pattern, but I just want to show you uh, what happens when this is below your path. So I'm going to go ahead and hit apply. You get something like this, okay? And that's not what we want at all. We don't want to pattern this path on this. We want to pattern these colors on this path, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and undo that, and I'm going to take, I'm going to highlight this and make sure it's to the top. Then I'm going to select this path, and then we hit Apply. Okay, and that gives me exactly what I want. Okay, now this whole thing is one object. If we ungroup, we'll get individual stripes down here that we can select. Okay, now it was important for me to get a nice sharp corner here. If I made my fillet, on my path too small, what we would get here is we would get a breakthrough or a bleed in this corner. And I wanted to make sure that I had a nice 90 degree angle here. If I make the the radius larger, of course, then I would have a inside radius here. That Maybe that's an effect that you guys want, uh, but it's not an effect that I wanted on this screencast. Okay, so we'll carry on. Okay, now what I'm going to do is turn my guides back on, and I think I can do that by holding my control key down and just picking into this ruler area. And I'm going to grab my Bezier tool, and I'm going to pick right here, and I'm going to drill it into here, about right there. We don't need to go all the way. You can, that's fine, but just need to go part of the way. And again, we're going to turn our guides off. And again, i got to make sure that this is on top of this path that I've just drawn. So I'm going to go ahead and send that to the top. We're going to se select this path here. We're going to go to Generate from Path, Pattern Along Path, Repeated Stretched, Snake. We take all the defaults. Um, I'm keeping my uh, path, by the way. That's why this one is checked. So we hit Apply. Okay. And this is the brunt of our tutorial. Okay, I'm going to take this now and make sure I get this on top. Okay, this is really the main part of the tutorial. And I've seen lots of tutorials online, Photoshop, Illustrator, and I've never liked really how people have done these inside uh, curves in here. Uh, they must be equal to me in order to look right. Um, when they're not visually, it just looks very ugly. So, um, it's nice taking these uh, objects here and uh, make sure they're uh, they're together and uh, going uh, go ahead and uh, taking that and patterning along a path. Now if I make this, I'm going to go back to 50 on this. And for some of you that are having problems snapping these things together, let me show you what we do here. If these things were all over the place. I think a lot of you probably know how to do this by now, especially if you've watched our uh, 
Richard and I are mind screencast for a while, but uh, if you don't know, what we do is we select this object first, this object second, we go to our line tool, we go to last selected, I'm going to line that to the centers, and then I'm going to push them together. Okay, and I do that with this button here. Again, I select this one, then this one, center, push them together, this here, this here, center, push them together, and this here, this here, finally, center, and we'll push them together. Okay? Now, obviously, if you have gaps in between here, maybe that's an effect that you guys want. You can center out those gaps, and as long as you have that a uh, group, you can go ahead and pattern that along a path, and you'd have some white spaces in there. So that's how you do that portion anyways. I kind of skipped that in the beginning, but I think you guys figured that out. Okay, so I've got this part here. Let me zoom out just a little bit. That's my main part of my retro stripes. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is, uh, before I carry on, this outside radius happens to be 500 pixels. So what I'm going to do is draw a circle that's 500 pixels in diameter. And we'll give this about a 3 maybe. And again, I'm going to hold my control key. I'm going to roll that back. Roll it up until I get a fillet. Okay, and that should fit right in here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and select these two things. Go to our align and distribute. Okay, we need to go to the bottoms and we need to snap to the very end here. Now what I'm going to do is zoom in on this and I'm going to make sure that my stroke is capped. Nice and rounded. Okay. And next I'm going to make this about a, uh, actually I think I'm going to, well, that's three. Let's see what, uh, let's see what four gives us. I'm going to give this about a 2. Actually, I want to make sure that that's nice and black. Okay. And I'm going to make this about, um, we'll leave it 100 and let me drop it down just to see where we are. Okay, and I'm just trying to get just a little bit of a shadow there. Let me undo that. Okay, I'm going to select this. I'm going to go to Path, Stroke to Path. I'm going to zoom in on this, and I'm going to clean up this little area here. I'm going to select these and just kind of drill it down just a little bit. It's going to get hidden in my last step, but I just want to make sure it's a little bit better than what it is okay I'm gonna push this up just a little bit Oop. make sure I only select one here okay it's kinda of hard to see Okay, let me go back out and let me drop that down a step okay and I think that looks probably pretty good okay I just want to simulate just a little bit of shadowing right there so it looks like this is on top of uh, this here okay I think that looks pretty good okay let me zoom out a little bit here uh, now the next thing that I want to do is uh, I need to draw I want to put a uh, uh, raster uh, image on top of this kind of grunge it up a little bit so uh, what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna draw a square here a rectangle let me 
let me remove the stroke and add a fill. I'm going to add a black fill. I'm going to make this 250 wide. I'm going to center that up on my page. And let's go ahead and turn our guides on and just push that down. There we go. And what I'm going to do is come down here and we'll make that 250 high. Slap that there. Okay, now what I want to do is take this, take this, and we'll push that to the top, and we'll take this now slide it down here. Now, the reason that I'm doing it this way, basically what I wanted to do was take these two objects here and uh, do a union on that. So I had uh, uh, this thing here. Um, I've, I could have taken this whole thing and done a union on that uh, after I broke it apart a little bit, uh, but it, it's a little bit more resource heavy. So since I'm just dealing with uh, rectangular shapes, you know, drawing that little mask right there is uh, just fine. So let's put that back. We'll uh, center that up on our page and push it to the top. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is turn my guides back off and I'm going to make some text. We'll, we'll write out retro. But I got to use the text tool, not my connector tool. Okay, and I've got some retro text. That looks pretty good. And I'm just going to stretch this out just a little bit. Okay, that looks probably pretty good. We'll center that up. And we'll just take a look at it up and down here, make sure that it's okay. I think we need to come down just a little bit. All right, and we'll zoom back out again. Okay, we'll zoom way out this time. Now what I'm going to do is bring in my grunge texture. This is just a texture that I got off of cgtextures.com. And I'm going to take this and this and I'm going to duplicate it for now. And I'm just going to push this in the middle somewhere. Doesn't matter where I put it. And I'm going to take both of these things and combine them. Then I'm going to select my background. We go to Object Clip Set. Okay. I no longer need this. Okay, and that's, this is going to give me a nice, uh, a little uh, grungy pattern on top there, okay? So what I'm going to do next is uh, I'm going to make this text green, okay? And let's see here. What I need to do is uh, set up some layers. So I'm going to go to View. Actually, I'm going to go to my Layer <laughs> Toolbar. Okay, and I'm going to make a new one called, uh, let's just call it Clip. And it's going to be above this layer. And I'm going to make sure that this is on my Clip layer. So I'm going to hold Shift, Page Up to move it. And I want to select Multiply for now. And we might have to change our transparency. Okay, now I'm going to take this and center that up on my page. Okay, I think we're getting close. Let's take a look at this. Okay, now if that's that's basically the effect that I wanted, but if it's a little dark to you. 
what you can do is go back into your layers we'll select that clip layer that we use multiply on and we can roll back that transparency a little bit if you want something uh, maybe we should try a 70 a little too dark yet how about a 60 I think that looks pretty good okay and next let's see what I want to do next is make a background and I thought about making kind of a grungy background uh, but just to speed this thing along I'm just going to uh, make a solid background with a radial gradient so I'm gonna go to my layers and uh, I'm gonna make a new layer and I'm gonna put it below my layer one and we'll call it BG for background okay and I am going to draw a rectangle the same size as my page 800 by 600 and I'm gonna go ahead and center that up and I want to make sure that it's this dark whiny purple color okay and I'm gonna double click on that I'm gonna hit shift R to reverse gradient I'm going to select my middle uh, node and pick this light color here. Okay, and I think that's just about it. Now what I want to do, I want to make this thing stand out just a little bit. Looks like I need to push this over just a nudge. There we go. So what I'm going to do is hit my down arrow a couple times. And by doing that, I kind of get an emboss effect. You can see that it kind of rolls up this edge here, lightens it up, darkens the edge down here, and kind of kind of makes that text stand out. It makes my uh, shape here stand out a little bit. And we do that just by moving that raster image down just a little bit. You can see how it makes your edges, uh, kind of rolls them a little bit. Just kind of brings it off of the background, okay? Now, if you're happy with that, that's fine. Or what I like to do, I don't like to make my uh, graphics, you know, too angly or, or too 90 degree or zero degree. So what I'm going to do is highlight everything and I'm going to scale up just a little bit. Now I'm going to watch my status bar down here. I'm going to hold control shift and I'm going to scale this up until I get about 110 percent. I just need to get close. If I wanted something exact I could use the transform tool. Okay, now, didn't look like I got it there. Let's get this out of the way, and let's get a bigger box here. Let's try it again. Now, I'm still not getting it. Let's back up. Must have a, must have my clip. Whoops. There we go. I got my clip down here. All right. Again, I'm going to watch that status bar. Okay, that's close to 110%. Now what I'm going to do is take this. Oop, I didn't get it again there. Let's get it all. There we go. I'll show you what I'm doing here in just a minute. Okay. We'll give it just a little bit of a of a rotation there. Now I want to zoom in on this. Okay. Now we're going to use our 
uh, we're going to use our, uh, I'm at a loss for words here, we're going to use our canvas border as our clipping plane, okay? Let me zoom back out. I want to make sure that I've got everything selected, okay? And I'm going to push this down just a little bit. I'm arrowing down. Okay, and I think I got it there. I want to make sure that I have everything set right here. Okay, it looks like this got adjusted just a little bit. We're going to push him back just a nudge. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and zoom back out on this. Okay, now what I'm trying to do when I export this, I'm going to go to my file, export bitmap. Okay, I'm going to select page. We'll go to browse. Let's see here. I'll go to uh, home, heathen X. Let's spell this right here. And I'll call this, uh, we'll just call it image.png. And I'll write that out. Okay. Now, when I open up that image, zoom this down a little bit so you can see it. And let's take this here and move it out of the way. You can see that my uh, my canvas border acted as my clipping plane. So anything outside of the border here got clipped off. Okay. And that's kind of what I was going for. Okay, I want just a little bit of the text clipped and then moving just at an angle there. And that is my retro curves. Okay, now on your own, uh, there's lots of things that you can do with this. If you were to Google uh, retro curves or retro stripes or whatever, or go to Google Images, you're going to find lots of uh, little examples. And uh, I made some uh, really neat ones uh, that just kind of go all over the place. Uh, but again, the more curves you add to your path, uh, the more resource uh, hungry Inkscape gets. So things do get a little slow. Um, I thought I would keep this one simple by just putting one curve in here. I think I got the effect, and you guys can uh, figure out what what to do here. But it was kind of a neat little project, and uh, if you're looking for making some uh, some type of a retro styling. Uh, for a banner or for a logo or whatever for websites or, or for your own type of stuff. This is kind of a neat little project. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Thank you for watching. I'm HeathenX.